Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a really, really exciting video. I am super happy to show you the new Makeup Geek rebrand. Going back a little bit to the beginning of my makeup history, the first um, brand that I uh, bought eyeshadows from and single eyeshadows from is Makeup Geek. I found, uh, um, I think via Jacqueline Hill and Nicole Guerrero back in 2013 or 14, um, 13 actually, in 2013. I bought the first eyeshadows, I started playing with makeup and uh, since then I collected almost every single Makeup Geek eyeshadow that they brought out. Some of them uh, were sent to me uh, a few years ago, but most of them I bought myself. And the my Makeup Geek eyeshadow collection is my baby. It's, it's like the most happy thing that I have. It brings me so much joy. And uh, you can find on my blog infinite posts of swatches with them. On my Instagram, lots of looks. There's uh, videos you can see. In my makeup collection videos, I show you the, them in the declutters. They never get touched because they are so good. So yeah, when Makeup Geek uh, reached out to me to uh, ask if I was interested in the new uh, rebranded eyeshadows and if I wanted to make some content on it, I was, out, I don't know, I jumped out of my chair. I was hyperventilating. There was only my husband next to me and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, Makeup Geek. And he's like, oh really, that's so exciting because he knows I love them so much. So thank you very much Makeup Geek for giving me uh, the opportunity to uh, try and test these out. And I want to start after this fangirling moment, I want to start with explaining a little bit the rebrand. There's a lot of, I find, lack of information in videos uh, about these. So I want to start by that. Um, Marlena did a few videos on the rebrand and a live uh, on YouTube explaining more things. Plus I always follow every uh, live on Instagram that she does or on Facebook. So um, I wrote down a lot of notes and uh, I wanted to discuss the rebrand a little bit with you. Um, to fast forward, you can read all of this information in my blog. I will link the post in the description box below. You will see um, a post with all the information about the rebrand. So this was, uh, um, yeah, long, long time coming and uh, the main thing that you see first thing uh, when you notice is that the eyeshadows are now in square pans. This whole thing stems from the new matrix system. Um, Marlena wanted to make a um, flexible system with uh, eyeshadows, which is not new, you say, that's true, and face powder, which is not new, that's true, but uh, they wanted everything to fit perfectly in what will be then your life palette. And in a palette like this, I'm actually gonna show you the visual. The idea is that in one palette, you're gonna be able to have two blushes, a bronzer contour, and a highlighter, and 12 eyeshadows. This is the idea and the only way to get all of this to fit in one palette was to have them squared and in this way you also waste the least space. So you have a very nice and compact palette with everything you need um, in your life for makeup, let's say. So that's why the square pans. I like the idea. I'm a bit I was a little bit, uh, um, how to say, hesitant because I love the look of all round pans and so, since I have such a huge collection from them, I was wor worried about mixing them in and have, having to have them in separate palettes because they don't look good together and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna address also the palettes. These are their usual mega vaults. I already have one uh, that you've seen many, many times that I use, um, I bought a long time ago and I use regularly. It's my favorite travel palette because it's very, very sturdy and it fits a lot of eyeshadows in a snug way. If you compare it to a Z palette, you can see that it's uh, smaller, it's a little bit thinner and it is much more sturdy. The, the front is, um, much more sturdy. These ones can fold and um, or bend a little bit and uh, ruin your shadows or your powders. So this has always been like since uh, of all the 
empty palettes I have, the uh, Makeup Geek Mega Vault has always been my favorite. Now you can see here in my palette um, that there is an edge to the uh, shadows. They don't fit all perfectly in here. And uh, um, that is something they didn't address yet. But uh, what uh, Marlena did say is that they have a lot of stock of these um, of these palettes and they're trying to, uh, instead of throwing things away, to um, yeah, just use them and get through it. The same situation will happen in your nine pan palette. Mine now is empty. Also, you love this one and use it a lot for travel. It has a wonderful mirror. Um, it's a bit dirty now, but I used this. This is an old one of mine. Here also you have a little bit of space around it. And uh, they said that actually they're gonna um, cycle these one out and have 10 pan palettes of cardboard um, so that it is more environmentally friendly. And uh, being more eco-friendly eco and just more aware is part of this rebrand. Marlena comes from a point where she um, keeps seeing palettes with the same shades coming out and she says I, I don't think consumers should buy these all the time. You should have your own perfect shades and uh, buy only those and then you can mix and match for, with, uh, with a new palettes every time or at least that's what Makeup Geek is trying to do. And that's why they um, made this matrix system. Now you are able to purchase these big palettes uh, from their website right now in, in, uh, in entirely like the two palettes together or only the colorful palette or only the uh, neutral palette but uh, you also have pre-made um, nine pan palettes as well as four pan palettes as, and you are also have the opportunity of course to just buy them individually. All the prices and uh, details will be in that blog post that I have linked in the description box, so go check that out. Uh, I will also give a shameless plug. I have a 10% off coupon code for you guys. It is affiliate, so I receive a part uh, of the sale as a commission, let's say, and that is Alice's Beauty Madness, just the name of my channel, blog, and all of my uh, social media. So. Feel free to use it. It is stackable to anything you have um, in your cart. And I already want to thank everybody who used it during the January sale because yeah, it was very nice uh, to see some support. That said, let's get into the shades because I know that's what we're here for. The um, new eyeshadows are a mix of new and old shades. In these two palettes that I received, there are most of the shades except for four. One of them is a new um, foiled berry type of shade that is called Mystical. Then we also have Peach Smoothie, which is a um, an old shade a matte that is fantastic. Thank God that they kept it. We have Flamethrower which I will show you later during the swatches and Grandstand which uh, if you know I got married in that shade. It's one of my favorite favorite Makeup Geek um, foiled eyeshadow. So those are also part of this rebrand and you can find them on the website. When it comes to the formula these have been reformulated according to Mar Marlena. They are made in the same brand, cruelty free and made in the USA. And uh, um, uh, you, can, you can tell a difference in the formula. And actually that is for the better. They have a velvety feel to them. They are not one of those mattes, um, I'm talking about the mattes that you would call buttery. These are more of a velvet feel. With the brush they apply so super smoothly. They are uh, nicely pigmented and uh, even when you apply a lot, I showed this a little bit on my Instagram uh, the other day, when you apply a lot you don't need to fuss too much to blend out uh, the excess and the edges. Uh, just take a clean brush and you can blend easily. I have now powered through testing these, especially the colorful shades, which I find are more difficult uh, to formulate. I have tested them now for two days and oh my God, you guys, the formula is incredible. I am so happy with it. Uh, Makeup Geek mattes have been my favorite for a very, very long time, as I said. Um, 
they, I prefer Makeup Geek to Anastasia Beverly Hills formula. Uh, and the new Makeup Geek formula, I would put up there with the Natasha Denona mattes. They blend themselves and they're nicely pigmented and honestly, yeah, I would put it up there with the Natasha Denona mattes. If you've seen my, my mini gold review, I'll link it up in the cards, but the matte formula of Makeup Geek now is even, even better. Today on my eyes, you see uh, this row right here. And that is also something that I really love about this rebrand is the fact, and of this matrix system, is the fact that uh, they are thought to be used in many different ways and to help you combine. So I love monochromatic looks. So um, I went in today with this mustardy row and then one of their older, um, a foil that I uh, I think is gonna come in the future um, as well in the in the new format. Um, but what Marlena was explaining in her video is that you can also use them mixing up colors. But what they wanted to show you is that you should always pick one per row. And explaining it a little bit in more detail, you can make an easily a, a look that will be cohesive and look good if you just pick any of the first row, then any of the second, any of the third, any of the fourth. And that is because then you will have the necessary depth and transition shades for a look. She showed quite a bit of interesting quads um, with that concept, let's say, using the colorful ones. I'm sorry if I'm blinding you, it's just I either have the palette in my face or I blind you. Um, with the colorful uh, mattes and um, yeah, I think it's very interesting concept. Personally, what I love the most and is most aesthetically pleasing is this, uh, these rows of uh, these columns, let's say, of monochromatic looks right there. Talking about um, the future and these rows, Marlena said that in a second stage later in uh, the year, they are going to bring out a full uh, row of pastels to complete this colorful matte uh, palette. And then all the foils that are these seven up here will be out in their own um, 28 shade foiled palette and I'm here for that. I think what I was missing indeed here were even a lighter row of colors and more foils. I love Makeup Geek foils. You can see it on my eyes today. They are extremely pigmented and they were one of the first foils on the market when just the regular shimmers were the norm. And um, yeah, I am really, really excited about that. In the second stage of their rebrand, they will also be bringing out um, their blushes in a square compact. I think you can already see them on the website. I have a bunch of them in here. Um, there are mainly these two middle rows and you can see the, oh no, these ones as well. These are the two contour shades from Makeup Geek that I have and these are the blushes. They are uh, round and the, the new pans will be square and they will look just like their highlighters and bronzers do now. So here is the medium bronzer Tawny that um, will be available as a pan. This one now here is in a compact, um, but these will also be, uh, I think these have also been faded, uh, faded out, phased out, sorry. And here is one of their highlighters. So right now you can purchase the pans in these square format already without the compact. And I think it's a brilliant idea. I wonder if I can depot these um, because they are really, really good products, both of them, um, I really love them. Then for a third phase of their rebrand, they're also going to bring uh, new textures and new type of uh, eyeshadows. And uh, I know Marlena mentioned duochromes and then uh, she says there's gonna be innovation. So I am expecting some glittery gorgeousness, some more multi-dimensional shades like we're seeing right now. And this should all happen during the year of 2020. I am really excited about this rebrand um, and I have blabbed now on for 20 minutes. It's time to get into the swatches of the shades and the comparison with the old eyeshadows. As I mentioned, I have a ton of them. So here is just one of my palettes and I will go through um, the old shades and the new shades, compare them uh, and show you a little bit uh, yeah, of a 
buying guide if you need any help to uh, purchase your new rebranded Makeup Geek eyeshadows. I am going to start with the neutral palette and starting up here we have the shade So Pale which is an existing shade, Vanilla Bean is an existing shade, Shimmer Shimmer is an existing shade and the only shimmer in this, um, yeah, in the whole uh, rebrand and then the new shade is Banana, Banana Split. Here you see the new shade which will always be the first one and the second one is the old So Pale. The difference here is minimal in the color but the new So Pale is fully matte whereas the old one which is this one right here has a little bit of a sheen, a very very slight sheen. No shimmer or glitter but uh, more of a satin finish. So that is the first couple. Here we have the new vanilla bean versus the old one and you can see that the new one, or I can see at least, is a little bit more peachy toned and slightly darker than the previous one. Next up is Shima Shima. Again the new one is a little bit more peachy um, than the old one and the shimmer is a bit lower. Now, uh, the old one here is as you can see a classic shimmer whereas this one here now the new one has a little bit more of a satin finish to it. Then last one for this row is the shade Banana Split. This is a new uh, eyeshadow. It is a more yellow toned matte. Um, this is beautiful and I wanted to compare it with Rapunzel which is one of their older shimmer um, shimmery shades and my favorite which is Mirage which is my perfect brow bone highlight and uh, this one here is it's still a little bit uh, less gray and a little bit more I don't know skin tones compared to banana split but here are the comparisons of the lightest shades in the new rebrand. Next up we're going to go for this uh, row of cool toned neutrals and this first shade Bedrock is the only one that is an existing shade. Unfortunately I don't own this, um, I checked and I can't find it so um, I won't be able to compare it to the new one but I will show you a comparison with other cool tone nudes that are in their old collection. This is the new eyeshadow Bedrock and this is a comparison with the shade Brownie Points and they are very similar. Brownie Points is a touch warmer maybe and this is the first lighter cool toned nude. Here we have the next two shades. We have Clean Slate which is a new one. Then we have Take for Granite also a new shade. Then I wanted to compare it with the, the darkest cool toned neutral that I have which is grunge. This is an old shade and you can see that it's still much warmer, more brown than the rest. Then we have the darkest of the new ones which is called Smoke Signal and I know that some people compared it and was complaining that it's not black enough. That's because it's not a black. They also have Corrupt. This is the old black. They have it now with the uh, pure pigments, the um, vivid pigments I think they're called. And those are now including a white and a black and this is the black by Makeup Geek Corrupt. So here you have the cool toned neutrals. Next up we have a row of neutral browns and of this row the only existing shade is Dark Roast. However there is a, co a shade called the Latte as usual that of course reminds me of the Latte that was already in the old um, formula and round pants so I'm gonna show you that comparison. Here are the first two shades. This one here is the new Beach Please a lighter neutral brown. Then we have the old shade Latte and you can see that this is much much warmer. The new shade Latte as usual, much more cool toned but it's quite, it's a little bit similar to the shade Creased which was in the previous formulation. So these are the first comparisons. Next up we have the new shade Espresso Yourself and the old shade Mocha. Espresso Yourself is a little bit more yellow toned than Mocha which is a little bit more of a redder brown. Same uh, level 
um, of darkness, let's say, but uh, they're two different tones. And finally, the new dark roast and the old dark roast. Again, you see that there is a little bit of a shift in shade. They're not exactly the same color, but you definitely do not need them both. And here is the third row, the neutral browns. Next up is the row of warm browns and um, we have creme brulee which is a previously existing shade and cheetah bear uh, this has been renamed it used to be called coco bear but this was named after marlena's previous husband and that didn't end well so she decided to rename it cheetah bear here are the first two shades the new creme brulee and the old creme brulee you can see that the new one has a little bit less of that uh, peachy uh, tone and is a little bit more muted very similar shades but slightly different undertones here we have the next two shades the new shade honey badger and i have compared it to the existing shade sora honey badger is uh, brighter and more orange than sora which is a bit more neutral or yeah neutral next comparison is cheetah bear versus coco bear and these are pretty much identical to the eye. Maybe uh, cheetah bear is a touch darker, but the difference is very, very minimal. Um, so these, I would say, are pretty much the same shadow. And I'm actually super surprised at how well Coco Bear held up. It's one of the first shadows I ever bought in, indeed, 2013. The last one in this row is the shade Chocolate Wasted and they don't have anything in their previous collection that looks like this so I compared it to Cabin Fever but you can see the Cabin Fever is lighter and a little bit more red than, uh, than Chocolate Wasted. And this was the fourth row. Next up we're going into these purpley shades right here and of these only the two darker ones exist already the shade vintage and the shade americano here we have the first few shades this one right here is prim and proper which is new next i put petal pusher from the original um, set and here we have the shade blush and beauty from the new and you can see that they're a very nice gradient with petal pusher being in between the two new shades here we have the comparison between the new vintage and the old vintage and they are pretty much the same shade which is good to see and finally the comparison between the new americano and the old americano the old one always had trouble swatching it performs well on the eye but swatching was always difficult i find that the colors are pretty much the same but it looks like the new one has an improved formula it swatches better it transfers better from the um from the pan so these are the purpley nudes next up is the row of pinks to reds and here we have the shade cupcake that is a, an original one and the shade bitten which is an original one here is the comparison between the new cupcake and the old one and you can see that here actually there is quite a big difference i was talking about this difference with angela mary tanner just yesterday on instagram and the new cupcake is much warmer and darker so she was saying how she cannot use it as a as a transition anymore because it's uh, quite a bit darker oh my apologies for having still shadow on my hand lol um so this is quite a different shade warmer i think i like it more but there was a place for a pinkier shade as well maybe we will see it in the new colorful pastels coming up something similar to this then we have the new shade getting figgy with it and i don't have anything else similar in the old collection and the new shade um, bitten next to that i put the old shade bitten you can now see quite a difference first of all in the formula the bitten compared to the other new shade formula is different it's uh, it doesn't it's it's not as velvety and buttery it's a bit drier of a formula and actually the new and the old uh, have a very similar formula. I tried them on me, my eyes on Instagram stories if you missed that. Um, but you can also see the difference in shade. The new one is much more brown, the old one is a bit more reddish purple. So that actually is a bit sad because Bitten was always quite a special shade in their collection. They just made it a little bit warmer that fits better with the gradient that they're working on of one, two, and three shades. So yeah, this is Bitten 
Finally, we have the last shade of the new ones, which is called uh, Give Me the Dirt. And I compared it to Aphrodite with, from the old ones. And uh, Aphrodite is, it's quite similar. They both have quite a hard time swatching. Aphrodite I had to apply with a um, brush because it, it doesn't swatch very well. Um, I put here extra the shade the Cherry Cola. This is one of my favorite shades from Makeup Geek ever. So I'm very sad I didn't see it back. But if you look at it compared to the new Bitten, um, there is a little bit of similarity in the undertone uh, better than with the uh, old Bitten. So um, yeah, I think these are more similar than it seems where with Cherry Cola still being much darker. But I wanted to put it in this comparison for you guys. And finally, the last row of the neutral palette, and these are the mustardy shades. We have Had Me at Yellow, which is new, Tiki Hut is uh, an old shade, and then Deja Brew and Coffee Before Talky. These are all new. Here we have the new shade Had Me at Yellow, compared with Preppy from the previous line. There's no similarity, Preppy is much more, yeah, brown than had me at yellow. Then here is the new Tiki Hut and the old Tiki Hut. They look pretty much identical. I think in camera the new one shows up a little bit more orangey but um, in person they look the same. And my apologies there's the sign of my watch that I carry there so that's why this one is a little bit patchy. So these are to my eyes pretty much the same. And here we have the new shade the Deja Brew compared to Mocha of the existing shades. And this one is also a new one that we saw earlier of the third row, Espresso Yourself. I actually think these two are very, very similar. They look like the, the Deja Brew should be a little bit warmer but uh, they look really similar. I don't think you need them both. And here we have the last shade which is called Coffee Before You Talkie compared to another new shade uh, dark roasted that I showed you earlier. So this is a new formula of, the, of dark roasted. You can see there is a little bit of a difference. Dark roasted is warmer whereas coffee before you talk is a bit of a cooler dark brown. I think it's it's perfect to have these two options. I really like uh, these. These two instead I still think that we didn't need both of them. Here we have the colorful palette instead and this one has the seven foiled shadows that are now present in the collection. There are three more that do not fit in this palette as I mentioned in the introduction and uh, I'm gonna again swatch them vertically by color story. Starting off with the green um, column only Enchanted Forest down here is an existing shade. The first comparison is the shade Illuminati with the shade Showgirl which was previously released and I think they're exactly the same. Maybe Illuminati has a slightly darker base, but to me, they look extremely similar. They have the same beautiful light green shade. And you can see that the foiled formula is still extremely metallic and rich and beautiful. Here we have the next shade, which is called Olive U. There's nothing similar in uh, Makeup Geek's greens. The famous Makeup Geek green is this guy right here, which is called um, Dirty Martini. It was one of the first single green eyeshadows that I remember um, and it was really, I don't know, famous to some extent. And uh, here I have the new shade which is called Spilled Tea, um, which is a little bit more of a, I don't know, more of a forest green and the formula is better, much better um, than the old one. So here you have the comparison. Finally, we have the new Enchanted Forest versus the old one. Unfortunately, I think the new one is slightly but a touch less green than the old one. And yeah, I don't think you would see a difference on the eyes, but there is a slight difference that I can see. Um, this one's a little bit more green. And here is the green column. Next up we have the blues and the only shade that is existing is Time Travel, this beautiful dark blue. More of a teal than a blue in the original formula. Now let's take a look at the comparison. Here we have the first comparisons. The first shade is this beautiful new shimmer called uh, Medieval. Sorry, it's a foil and it has beautiful depth and texture. It's really, really, really beautiful. 
I compared it to Autumn Breeze, which is a more teal shimmer. Um, I think it's a regular shimmer from fall 2018. It's deeper and less uh, uh, shimmery, uh, less, less textured. I think Medieval is gorgeous. Next one up is the new shade Blew Me Away. And um, this guy right here, when I applied it to the eyes, was a little bit chalky. So um, yeah, light blues are also difficult to make, but this one is a little bit chalky. I compared it to an existing shade Peacock. Peacock always gave me trouble uh, of skipping on my eyes and being patchy, um, but it's not a dupe color. Also not of the next new shade, which is called Seize the Day, which seems a little bit better uh, when applied to the eye than Peacock and I could actually get a really nice transition yesterday on my eye looks. All the eye looks you will be able to see on my Instagram, Alice's Beauty Madness, or on my blog, alicesbeautymadness.com. Finally, the new time travel versus the old time travel, and this I'm very happy to see because look at how much more vibrant and less gray the new one is. It's also a bit more teal and vibrant than uh, the old time travel. This one here is a very nice deepening shade um, and I feel like we are then now missing a very dark blue, um, hoping that it will come because uh, this one here I would still call like a medium teal. Um, beautiful shades. Marlena spoke in her live that they are planning on putting a new row of teals in between here, so a little bit more green blues um, in between here. What I think is missing is a row of real blues, like this one here, which is Blue My Mind, is a foiled from, uh, um, yeah, I think 2018. Next row up is the cool toned purples. Here we have the existing shade Whimsical, which is this one right here, and it's the only existing shade. These ones were the hardest ones to blend, the mattes that I uh, experienced, especially this cool toned blurple right here was quite hard, but all purples are difficult, and this one in the end was like, it blended nicely, it didn't patch, it didn't make a, a mess. It was just, it needed a little bit more work, so. Here is the comparison between the new Whimsical and the old Whimsical. They're very, very similar. The difference is almost imperceptible. They're pretty much the same shade, beautiful, smooth um, formula of their fo foiled eyeshadows. Here we have the new shade Current Obsessions and I feel like there would be something from maybe a limited edition that they did or a discontinued shade I remember that was this color but I can't remember the name or find it right now and I don't have it. Uh, but as you can see in these swatches purples are very difficult, they don't swatch great and they're a bit difficult on the eye so you can actually see this in the swatches right now. Next one up is the new uh, curfew, I miss, miss, uh, misspoke earlier, there is another uh, duplicate, this is the new curfew and this is the old curfew and uh, the new one is quite a bit more cool toned and the formula seems quite similar um, when touching them and swatching them. Then we have the final uh, purple, the darkest purple in the collection, which is called Eternally Grateful right here and I decided to uh, compare it to Taboo and Motown, which were the other two dark purples in the um, collection. And you can see that Taboo was much more gray uh, and darker, and then Motown was much cooler toned, which in this collection we're missing a proper cool toned purple, uh, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I also prefer this type of shades anyways, more berry purples. So this is the purple, the first purple row. I feel like somewhere here we would also have the new um, uh, foiled shadow somewhere around here in this tone which is called mystical which is a wine shade. It could also fit in the next row but I wanted to mention it already. Here is the comparison. We have the new whimsical versus the old whimsical. The new one seems um, to have a little bit of a more pinky base compared to the uh, old one, both still with a very, very high shine. Then we have the shade on Wednesdays, which is um, a nice pink, but a little bit more muted than uh, something I wanted to show you. Simply Marlena from the previous line. This is a much more vibrant fuchsia pink, and this was yeah, Marlena's color in the previous line. 
then we have the shade back to the fuchsia which is a little bit more magenta and uh, vibrant yet and then uh, wine and dine these all performed really well on the eyes um, what i felt both in the look and now swatching them is that i would have a darker shade yet here um, i am missing a darker shade of berry let's say of course you can use eternally grateful from the previous uh, row uh, to deepen up the look yet uh, more Next up we have the row of pinky corals and we have an existing shade called Starry Eyed Tuscan Sun which was one of my favorite shadows from them ever. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, a beautiful pinky salmon um, and then two new shades. So let's get swatching. Here we have the new Starry Eyed and the old Starry Eyed and they are pretty much identical. You can see the beautiful shine of both. If anything, the new ones even have a little bit more shine. I don't know. They look absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best uh, inner corner highlights that you can have. It's so absolutely beautiful. It's like a peachy, champagne-y shade. Gorgeous. Then we have the new Tuscan Sun and the old Tuscan Sun. They're very, very close, very similar um, in shade. And I'm very happy they tried to keep it as close as possible because it is one of their best sellers. It is one of the best shadows they have in their collection. And then here we have the new shade Pinky Promise, which in the pan looks a little bit different than Toscan Sun, a little bit more muted and a little bit more pink but swatched I think on the eyes they're pretty much the same shade I wanted to compare it with the new cupcake just to show you the difference and it would also be a pairing that I would naturally make with these two and um, yeah maybe he like this you can really see a little bit more pink compared to Tuscan Sun but the difference is minimal my apologies I had to increase the lights because my camera wasn't seeing my arm anymore um, finally the darkest of this row of this uh, column which is very shady which is a beautiful beautiful shade it's absolutely gorgeous and um, it works really really great I wish again here I had another darker shade but you can mix with the other two dark um, berries that you have in the uh, next to it so these are the corally pinks Next up, we move on to the row of the peaches and <laughs> I don't know, more neony colors and we end up with this beautiful red. The only existing shade here is the shade in the spotlight. Here we have the new in the spotlight and the old one and uh, you can see that they're pretty much exactly the same. They are a peachy base with a really bright pearl on top. Beautiful, beautiful shades. I love these. They're so gorgeous. I'm so happy they still have them in the collection. Here we have the new shade Peach for the Stars right here. And I compared it next to Summer Lovin' and a Pumpkin from the round pans. These are some of the newer round pans though. Um, so not everybody has them or they were not as famous. I think Pumpkin was in a pre-made fall palette um, and Summer Lovin' was from the fall... Uh, or from the summer collection from 2018 and you can see they're all slightly different uh, with the new peach for the star being a little bit more muted and wearable possibly and more orange than pumpkin but you don't need all three for sure then we have the shade staycation which is a beautiful rosy or pinky coral i compared it to an old shade poppy but it's much more orange and finally hot tamale which is such a beautiful beautiful red I love this in uh, a look I put it all over the lid it's just so gorgeous and vibrant and blendable and fantastic formula very happy that they added this in this eyeshadow formula I know they have a red a much brighter red in the power pigments but um, yeah I'm very happy they have this shade right here it's definitely um, one that I recommend beautiful red Next up, we have the final column for this palette and this whole rebrand. Um, and we have the shade Legend, which is an old one, Chickadee, which is an existing one, and Morocco is an existing one. And they've added the shade Brick House. So let's take a look. Here we have the first comparison between the new Legend, the old Legend, and a shade that I have in the old pan, but now exists 
in the new uh, rebranded pans as well, which is Flamethrower, and I wanted to add it here for comparison, and because I feel like it, it fits in this uh, row of uh, uh, very, very hot, warm tones. So these are three foils. The Legend has exactly the same point of color. I find it's really, really the same. Here we have the comparison between the new Chickadee, the old Chickadee, and the old um, early bird. And I actually think early bird matches the new chickadee much more. It's much more orangey and yes, yellow toned. I'm a bit sad about that. Chickadee had a beautiful point of yellow that was very wearable. And uh, now it's much closer to early bird. Then again, um, I had these two and I couldn't really, yeah, you don't need both. Um, I would have preferred that we kept the color of the, or they kept the color of the old chickadee, but um, it's still a beautiful shade. Here we have the comparison between the new Morocco and the old Morocco, and you can see that the new one is a little bit deeper and a little bit less orange, but not a very big difference. I think the old one was a bit better because it was much brighter of an orangey uh, tone, but um, yeah, this is the comparison. And finally, here we have the comparison between the new brick house and I put this guy right here, which is apple spice. It's one of the newer um, of the newer round pans, but you can see that um, brick house is much more red toned than uh, apple spice and it's a beautiful shade for fall. It's, it's like this whole row screams fall to me and summer and hot and beautiful. Um, I love, that's why I have also so many swatches. You guys, that brings us to the end of all the swatches of the new rebranded shades. As you can see in the pan, they're not overly powdery. They don't have a lot of kickback and um, yeah, they're almost as good as when I uh, first received them. Beautiful formula. The foils are absolutely great and um, yeah I hope these swatches help you and um, yeah you can make an informed decision you will find all of these in photo on my blog alicesbeautymadness.com the link will be in the description box once the blog post goes up um, it might be that the video will go up and on the blog post you will only find the pictures because I'll wait to put some text when I have time let me know down below if you also want to see looks with this or any other comparison. I'll be happy to do it for you. For now, this was a big endeavor and the light changed 20,000 times because we went from morning to night, pretty much, uh, in doing these uh, swatches. So thank you so much for all of you who made it this far into the video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you're gonna pick up and don't forget to use my code Alice's Beauty Madness for 10% off. I sound like a Morphe affiliate, but Makeup Geek is much better of an affiliate to be than Morphe, somehow, in my head at least. I'm really passionate about this brand. I love their ethics. I love their customer service. I love everything about them. So yeah, the only thing I love a little bit less is that I have to pay for uh, customs when I order from them, which I do often if you know me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in my next video.